this is Patrick Bowen, co-founder and chief revenue officer for InsureAware. I'm joined today by JJ Bowman, head of distribution strategy and operations at John Hancock. And today we're going to discuss how a small change in the Consolidated Appro Appropriations Act of 2021 is having a large impact in the life industry as it pertains to section 7702 of the Internal Revenue Code. So welcome today, JJ. Thank you, Patrick. Great to be here. Great, great. Well, we'll just jump right into it. How have the new Section 7702 limits affected product development plans there at John Hancock? Well, it certainly did affect our product development plans, but I think I'd start by saying that the change is very welcome news uh, for customers and I think agents and BGAs. Um, and it's especially welcome news for anybody who is purchasing or selling an accumulation product. Um, we, um, you know, have adjusted our product development plans accordingly based on you know the news of what happened with 7702 and maybe i'll just give a a little bit of a debrief on what actually did happen um, but interest rates as you know have been declining for decades uh, and they cratered again in 2020 you know right as covid was um was really becoming a a big issue in in you know january february and if the original 7702 design uh, is, was basically made unstable for, um, especially for certain types of accumulation products. Um, and the reason for that is that the original legislation from the 1980s was using hard coded rates for calculating maximum funding limits. So that was either 6% or 4%, depending on what exactly you were looking at. And those are reasonable rates in the 1980s and 90s, but that's certainly a stretch by 2020 when the you know federal funds rate was you know down below, well below one uh, percent. So um, legislation was proposed uh, to in last spring, I think originally to um, you know really address this issue. But by summer, passage seemed unlikely, and by winter, we had basically moved on and assumed that no changes would come. But then right before the new year, the legislation was made effective just a few days later on January 1st, and that sort of set off a scramble for, um, for the industry. Mm -hmm. And after we looked at, you know, what was going on, it was clear by, you know, early January that the new interest rate assumptions for 7702 really fundamentally changed contribution limits for accumulation products. Mm -hmm. And over the last few decades, those contribution limits have been going down sort of steadily and incrementally, incrementally excuse me. Um, but now what we're seeing is contribution limits that are back to where they are in many cases, back to where they were in the 1980s. Um, so it's a really huge fundamental shift uh, in, uh, in those contribution limits. And that was especially true for those accumulation products. So that's really what forced, I think, the whole industry to sort of reset their plans for 2021. Yeah, absolutely. Good time for accumulation products. So you know, in light of that, did, did you adjust target premiums in conjunction with the new limits? And if so, why? Yeah, we certainly did adjust uh, target limits. Um, you know, the, the much higher contribution limits uh, create different design options for accumulation products. So you know, now you can really fund at a much higher level. And if we just let targets where they were, if we just let them the same, if we just updated tables, we thought we would have an imbalance in some scenarios between policy performance for the customer and what we were compensating our agents and uh, BGA partners. And it's really always a trick, you know, it's actually probably the most fundamental trick in, in product development is to make sure you have the right balance between what are we providing for the, the customer? What are we, comp how are we compensating, you know, the, the, the intermediaries and the producers who are selling it? And what are the company's profitability goals? And especially in this really short timeline where we didn't have the, the rest of the market to react, you know, we really had to try to figure out what is that right balance? And I'm very pleased with how we managed it. Um, basically, what we did is we added an enhanced target for cases that um, were funded at a certain level. So when they when people funded at a certain level, we're actually going to pay uh, agents more, and that really helped us uh, restore the balance for when customers choose to fund at those maximum uh, levels. So in the end, you know, we really were able to improve uh, performance across the board for customers. Um, at the same time, we're able to I think uh, compensate agents and um, BGAs fairly. And I'm really optimistic that this is going to lead to more sales opportunities. So carriers will also see increased uh, financial results as well. Yeah, absolutely. I, and I guess in light of that, did, were there any other product or pricing changes that you made due to 7702? 
So right now we've really focused just on the accumulation uh, space. So we've updated our accumulation IUL um, that was done a couple months ago. And then in July, we'll be updating our accumulation VUL product. Okay. Uh, we are updating um, and adding these new tables to our protection oriented products as we reprice them, but those weren't as immediately uh, impacted. So we felt like we could just sort of update those as we, as we go. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. I know, you know, something on a lot of people's minds is, is, you know, what's going to happen to policies sold after January 1st. So are you planning to correct and administer policies sold after that date where the illustrations don't reflect those new 7702 limits? Uh, yes, we are. So for any policy issued in 2021, uh, mm -hmm. we are planning to update the seven pay, the guideline premium and the necessary premium limits. And we'll do that retroactively to the start okay. of 2021. Um, the CVAT minimum death benefit factors are also able to change, and those are a little bit uh, trickier uh, mm -hmm. from our standpoint because those were contractually guaranteed. Um, so we're going to be updating that piece as we um, as we reintroduce new uh, new products and reprice those products in those policy forms. Okay, great, great. Well, um, how do you think you'll handle future changes to the 7702 rates? Get, kind of looking further ahead. Sure, sure, and 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 you know what. One thing that I think was helpful for us is to really understand, okay, you know, that was quite a scramble. We're basically right. six days or, you know, seven days, yeah. right, before that, the legislation comes in. But now we know going forward, it's going to be a lot more, uh, we have a lot more sort of advanced notice. And mm -hmm. uh, any change, we, so for, let's just say, this is what we know. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that any change is going to take effect on January 1st of a given year. We also know that there's going to be no change in 2022. It's also very unlikely that there'll be a change in 2023, uh, but we'll know for sure in just about a month or so. Um, we also know, so now as we look ahead, probably to 2024, that we would get an 18-month heads up before okay. any other change would, would come. So that's a lot better than the one-week heads up we got uh, in <laughs> right. 2020. A lot, um, lot easier to deal with it with, with a little extra time, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So um, you know, so going forward, you know, we've also set up our contracts so that, you know, they can, they don't necessarily need to be uh, adjusted or we won't need to do a refiling mm -hmm. uh, to incorporate these changes. Um, and so, you know, I think it's going to be a lot smoother, but, you know, I would also say, <laughs> you know, interest rates are really low. These contribution limits are really high. There's no guarantee that these limits are going to be there forever. So I just think right. it's another reason for us to act now. I mean, there's a great opportunity um, with you know regulation and tax changes to um, to to just use life insurance, and I think um, you know NALBA members are you know in a great position. I think to to really um, help uh, you know sort of spread that word and, and and get more sale opportunities. Yeah, absolutely, a good thing for distribution and, and for consumers. Yeah, yeah, and in light of that, you know, do you, do you kind of see as we move forward, uh, is this going to have a big impact from your stand viewpoint? on how life products are you know, first positioned and then ultimately how they're bought and sold? Yeah, it, it, it's a great question. And I think, I guess I'd say not fundamentally. I don't think that 7702 is going to fundamentally change things. But the way I see this change is it's just one more reason why life insurance is as relevant as ever. I mean, if you just look at the last you know, year and a half here, you know, so first, obviously, we had the COVID pandemic. And, you know, that really, I think, helped people see that the fundamental value of life insurance, I mean, it, nothing is more real, right, when you're, you, you, when you're seeing, and, you know, the, the tragic loss of life and, and, and what happens, and the core value of life insurance, that death benefit protection, has become a top of mind concern for customers. Mm -hmm. um, and customers are now as focused as ever on improving their health. And our John Hancock Vitality Program, which we've had for a while, is really designed exactly for this moment. It helps and rewards customers for living a, uh, a longer, healthier life. And in fact, we just launched a product that offers uh, competitive no-lapse guarantee premiums that can be reduced even further by engaging in this Vitality Program. So mm -hmm. we're seeing customers really focus on their health. They've really responded to this program. And you know, customers now have these really competitive no lapse guarantee premiums, and they, in some cases, can reduce those guarantee premiums by more than 20% by engaging in the program. So we've, I think we've really tried to meet the moment in that, in that factor. So first, you have customers focused on their health. Second, you know, we have a new administration, and you know, that administration, plus all the spending we've done in the last few years, is really making increased taxes a likely outcome. And I think customers are seeing that too. And life insurance 
as an estate planning and wealth transfer tool is going to look even better. And then the third thing we're seeing are these new contribution limits. So customers can now make life insurance even more efficient for cash value growth. Right. And you know, at John Hancock, you know, we've been able to do this while making these sales also more attractive to producers and BGAs. Um, so you know, I don't think this will change fundamentally how life insurance is bought and sold, but these big factors, the customer focus on health and mortality, tax changes, higher contribution limits, I think are a real tailwind for, for our industry. Yeah, absolutely. That definitely hit on some, some really good tailwinds there. You know, uh, maybe on the, on the opposite side, do you see that there'll be any competitive challenges as a result of these new, new rates? Well, I think, you know, given the magnitude of the changes, I do think it's going to take a little bit of time for the competitive landscape to shake out. Yeah. Um, and this happens occasionally when companies are all repricing products in the dark without being able to see how other companies have reacted. Uh, but I also think this is a great time that makes, you know, this is what shows the value of an ALBA member because producers need guidance on how to deal with these changes. And they need to, you know, really talk to some experts who are gonna be able to understand all the factors that are going on, whether it's 7702 or who knows what it is um, to make the best recommendation for their specific situation. So um, I'm not sure I see competitive challenges. I really just am really optimistic about what this means for life insurance companies and third-party distribution. Yeah, great. Great, great. Well, in, in closing, any other comments you want to add uh, re regarding 7702? Um, I don't know, about, not necessarily about 7702. I think what I would just say is, you know, thank you to, to all of our members. You know, we, we distribute uh, insurance exclusively, you know, through third-party distributors. And, you know, we really rely on, you know, on, on you, on new NALBA members to, to help, you know, make, get these messages out and you know, we're committed to, to creating these best in class products and best in class solutions um, for, for producers and customers. Great. Well, JJ, thanks for your time today. And, and thank you for John Hancock's commitment to Nailba. And we'll send it back to the main stage. Thank you very much, Patrick.